All right, welcome. This is uh, the first uh, introduction uh, to the microscope. I must tell you that uh, after going through all the materials uh, for the e-science, and I wasn't uh, I wasn't very happy about uh, the depth at which uh, some of the materials, uh, the CDC uh, material should help, but uh, I'm going to go over. I've added it, hence a uh, delay a little bit. But um, it, it, uh, we'll see how it goes. This is the first time I've ever tried to do this, and so you're my guinea pigs. I warned you about that. And so let's go ahead and start uh, looking at uh, the microscope. First of all, one of my favorite sayings is chance favors the prepared mind. Uh, I always like to start off with mindset because when, when you uh, prepare your mind for things that you're going to do, sometimes opportunities become avail and you'll notice them. If your mind's not prepared, you're thinking about other things and that sort of stuff, uh, you, you might miss them. And that's one of the important things that I've learned uh, as I go through. And Louis Pasteur evidently uh, understood that quite well. So we're going to talk about getting to know the microscope. And in the process of doing and using the microscope, obviously, we have to use uh, my, uh, bacterial slides or microbial slides. And so uh, I wanted to show how to prepare the slides and the various things. Your kits, you should. I don't know where you are on, on doing various things, but uh, I provided my own protocols. If you wanted to utilize what's in your kit uh, to follow this, it would be great. You can do that. Uh, I understand what's in the kit. Uh, so let's, uh, let's proceed here. So obviously you go through the e-science on, on Blackboard. It's usually just a lab. If you notice, it has the page with a little uh, symbol of the Earth on it, and that is the link uh, that takes you. It's usually in bold, and it'll take you to uh, on the web to their site, and then you can go and do various uh, projects and things that are in that. And I've already gone gone over that, but I just wanted to review. So let's get started. And of course, we want to. Uh, at any time we uh, perform these experiments, we want to be wearing uh, our coat, our gloves, and our goggles uh, pertaining uh, to staining and that sorts of things. Uh, the gram stains, when we're going to talk about those, uh, I've probably ruined every shirt I've ever worn in a lab that's a nice one. So I always wear scrubs and things like that for these types of labs because ultimately you might be spilling things on yourself, on your person, as they say. Um, so the uh, science, e-science labs, uh, they go through the various learning objectives, and I hope you've been through that. Uh, it's a good introduction, but I'm going to carry it a little bit further here. Um, that's why I wanted you to uh, kind of do that first. And we've talked about in chapter two the different types of microscopes, and I gave examples of of each of these, so I don't see any need to go over those again. Um, you can see the magnification, and about the best I can do on the scope that I've uh, I have with me that you're going to get to uh, to visit today is about. Uh, 1250x. Now I had a compound scope when I was at the vet school that was a Carl Zeiss and the best it could do is around 1800x uh, and that was really a high dollar scope but I uh, I really needed a good scope for the type of work I was doing so uh, I don't think I need to go over those scopes I think you already know but uh, it's it's in your listing there and the same as what a microscope is according to the e-science uh, material so I'm going to to reinforce uh, this write-up uh, a little bit more substantially and uh, more of a hands-on type of view and hopefully uh, I could pull this off today let's see how it works the, so just an introduction uh, I am going to ask you in a lab practical uh, to identify uh, features of the microscope, uh, the adjustable eyepieces, the objectives that are rotating on the uh, 
revolving nose piece. And then we have the uh, coarse adjust, which is the big knob, and fine adjust is the small knob on most microscopes. We have the stage, and on the stage are clips or these uh, uh, portions that you uh, swing out to uh, hold the slide, and I'll show you uh, what I mean by that. Under the stage, really, you don't need to mess with it very much. Uh, these are various things. Once they're set, they should be fine for the duration. Uh, I'll briefly go over those. The illuminator, which is the light source. Um, and then on the side over here, you can't see, is usually a switch and a rheostat that makes the uh, illuminator brighter or darker, whatever the cases are. The eyepieces up here, by the way, has an adjustment. And most of them do that you can rotate this and on it it will be uh, the diopter setting for your uh, glasses if you happen to be wearing glasses you can take those off set the diopter whatever your correction is and you'll have a really good viewing experience and that's uh, something that's nice in a lot of microscopes so some of the key things always uh, in a microbiology lab, a microscope is, is sort of like the, the jewel, the crowning jewel. Uh, we take care of the microscopes. When we carry them, we always use both hands. We put one hand underneath the scope and then the other holding the arm uh, portion. Now we plug in the microscopes. Usually you don't unravel the cords. It's not necessary. And we start with the scanning or the low power 4X, typical and uh, we'll talk more about that. Now we use lens paper to clean uh, the lens. We never use Kleenex paper towels that can scratch the lenses. There's specialized paper that uh, is such that it's a very fine type of linen and it will not score or scratch the lens. So uh, I'll show you how to do that today. Um, we always put the uh, microscope away in the ready position. In other words, the stage is is all the way down, all the way back, and we set it back to the 4X. And we always make sure that the person who uses that scope after you uh, will not know that you use that scope. In other words, the ready position is the starting position and all scopes should be that way. And they should not uh, be left in uh, some disarray with oil on it or it's on uh, some other objectives. Uh, it lets the person like yourself, when you go to use the scope, it lets them know that the care was taken and you're uh, most likely going to have a good experience using the microscope. And that's our job is to make sure that everyone uh, has a good experience using a scope. And that's, of course, my goal. So instructor... Uh, demo and so what I'm going to go over is I'm going to look at uh, the stage and the objective lenses and just talk about those uh, somewhat and before we can really start the show I, I'll just show you the base so Lydic is what uh, uh, what we use at uh, Wake Tech really nice coats mine's not as so fancy it's when I got off of eBay which you know it's a $300 scope and I think I got it for like 150 bucks. Um, it, it's it, the deals are out there. If you're interested in a scope, you want one that has a revolving nose piece and at least four objectives. Three objectives you can get away with, but four really shows you the class of quality of the microscope and if it uh, does uh, par focal. And I'll, I'll talk about what that is. So those are the things you look for, and uh, we'll go from there and then uh, talk about the ocular objectives and so uh, let me now switch hopefully I could do this without discombobulating uh, all the stuff that I worked on here let's see if we can let's see boom nope that's not where I wanted to go that's where I wanted to go so let me kill that okay so this is uh, my little microscope and uh, this is one that uh, is sitting in front of me right now, and I'll wave hi. Uh, so this this microscope is sitting, and of course I use the red background um, to rah rah NC State, and of course, and you'll find that I uh, always prefer that. But let me zoom down just a smidge here, 
and you can see the switch on which I left it on uh, for purposes here so uh, my software can recognize it and there is the rheostat or it's something you can adjust the brightness of the light now I would recommend leaving the light source somewhere in the middle otherwise uh, you'll burn your retinas out no I'm just it, it will be uncomfortable it'll be too bright and things tend to get uh, uh, saturated so you won't be able to see the details so somewhere in the middle is a good setting and as they say pretty much over here these are the manipulators for the stage while I'm looking down here so you, you always use the manipulators to move the stage I see students come over here and using the, the stage and pushing it around and I'll have a heart attack because that can damage the gears and uh, they're made mostly out of uh, it's not steel it's a softer metal and you can damage uh, the gears that way the revolving nose piece up here and you can see the shortest lens that's pointing down right now I'll bring it out here that's the 4x is the one with the red band and then we go over uh, to the next uh, magnification which would be 10x uh, with this objective then we're looking at 40x uh, with the next objective and I put that down and then the highest objective I have on this particular microscope is 100x and if I use uh, oil and some other things I can get the total magnification of this particular microscope at a, a 1250x which is pretty good for 160 bucks or 130 bucks I forget what I paid but uh, anyhow so let's go back let me move this up and we'll just primarily be looking uh, about where the knobs are so you can see those I'll zoom in uh, from time to time uh, hopefully to uh, allow you to have uh, a better viewing process here so you can see the light source now I do have a camera on here and hopefully uh, that's picking up everything that's uh, going through the viewfinder and so you'll be able to see both this and what's on the viewfinder on the screen so this is the cause and then you can see the effect in a, a, a separate screen um, when I uh, create the video you'll see it so uh, concurrently so you can kind of see what I'm doing and what the effects are that's the best that I can do to give you that sort of feel for what a microscope uh, how it works and, and what we're doing with it and so uh, let's uh, look at up here we have the binocular and the binocular I have a rotating head on mine which is nice because I don't have to use to move the microscope which causes vibrations and it can cause you know some of the uh, these are very sensitive these uh, lenses and I, I want to make sure I'm doing the least to perturb my microscope especially the cheap ones like mine <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not going to damage them so you can have a partner look at it without moving the scope and back and forth and it's fine but for this purpose you can see it's binocular uh, you can adjust the width if your eyes are farther apart or whatever you can adjust it just like a binocular and uh, so you can have that uh, sort of experience and so uh, this is typically 10x and mine of course I had a weird one it, with a Carl Zeiss I had 15x and then we have the objectives down here and they're always written right on them on a lab practical or whatever you can read right off the lens what the uh, the, uh, the power is and uh, you get familiar with it as to you know, is it one two three or four and their color code and all that but 4x times 10x means that the final magnification what I'll be looking through what we call the scanning uh, magnification will be 40x final or total magnification that's what you report on your papers because if I have my Carl Zeiss and you say well take your 10x and you put it on the floor I don't have those so what I have to do is adjust my scope to get 40x which is at the bottom of this of the uh, it'd be really hard probably the best I could do would be uh, 15 times 4 uh, so it's uh, 60x and so at least I'm aware that I'm going to have a little bit higher uh, magnification than, than you that way I can adjust my scope to match what you report as your magnification because scopes are different 
And so that's what we want to uh, get into uh, a habit of doing is reporting the final or total magnification, which is really simple. Is whatever the uh, nose piece objective is, the standard objective times the ocular, which in this case is 10x, it's written right on it. And you do the math, and you only have to take your shoes off for that. Uh, 10 times makes it really easy. So it's 40x final. If I move it to the next, of course, uh, I could stop the slides and uh, ask it as a question, but I think it's so straightforward. It's a 10x uh, objective times 10x of the binoculars up here, the oculars. Uh, so I'll have a final magnification of 100x, and so on and so forth. And so uh, that is uh, at least the magnification of the lens system. And so uh, that at least gives you an introduction. Uh, the manipulators over here, this is the course adjust. You can see what it does is it moves the stage up and down. And the fine adjust does it really very slightly. Now, on the 4x, we always uh, we can use the, the uh, course adjust. And what I usually do, and this is where students, uh, if you haven't used a microscope before, is you want to move the stage all the way up and then down just about a quarter of a turn. And that'll get you in the ballpark to start with. And I have uh, some techniques that I'm going to talk about here shortly uh, that help you focus. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of do the, the brief introduction first to get us started. And then uh, we'll go uh, back, hopefully, here uh, to the presentation, wherever that may be running. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. So that was, uh, uh, we, we went over these uh, aspects of the scope, the stage, the objective lenses, how to calculate uh, the uh, final or total uh, magnification. We know that the 4x is the scanning lens because we scan around uh, initially to see what we want to zoom in. Uh, we adjust the light source at, at the base and then the ocular magnifications 10x is written right on there. So, uh, talking about the basics of the scope, the lens, focusing and working with slides. It's kind of the flow of things. And so I've, I've kind of already covered a lot of this, uh, which is good, so we're, we're moving good and that's the idea. Now we're going to go and talk about bacteria stains. Now in your kit you have uh, some, not all. I wanted to uh, just at least bring up four different types of stains. And we have basic stains, methylene blue, Graham saffron, India ink, uh, Congo red, various things. A lot of the simple stains are vital stains. In other words, these are stains that actually stick to the bacteria. Uh, they're positively charged stains that adhere readily to the cell surface, which would obviously have to be a negative charge. A negative stain is particularly useful determining cell size and arrangement. Nigrosin, which is in the kit, is an acidic negative stain and is used to stain cells that are too delicate to heat fix. This means, so if it's a negative stain, it's acidic, then it's binding to more of a uh, uh, a charge that uh, allows us to see things. So it's acidic, uh, which is uh, hydrogen positive charge, and it's going to be binding a negative. But negative stains kind of uh, give you higher contrast uh, than uh, other stains do. So uh, the, the Nigerson stain is a good one to use. Then we have the capsule stain, which uh, one of the reasons I like to bring this up is, of course, a lot of bacteria that can produce these polysaccharides, which we talked about in class is a way to try to escape the immune system because it's covering itself with carbohydrates and of course carbohydrates are considered or seen as self and self means that well you know uh, we're not create immune response to it and that's how bacteria can evade it so we want to know if they have it a uh, good one would be uh, uh, I think I have a slide here I'll show you with the capsule stain but it uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae, you'll see that. Usually it's a glistening colony, so you'll know, and you go to put your loop on it, which I'm going to talk about loops here in a minute. Um, it's real snotty and stringy. I know if, if you've had uh, your dinner or lunch or whatever yet, but uh, yeah, it's, it's nasty. And then the good old gram stain, we're going to talk about that last. You're set up uh, to do that. 
and I'm going to talk about it just briefly. We've already gone through the logistics of the gram stain and how it works uh, in chapter two. And you see how well this overlaps. So we're, we're already ahead of the game in the lab part because we took the time uh, and you invested the effort in chapter two. And so that's, that's why uh, the summer is, we have to move quickly, but uh, we can do it smartly, I hope. And I hope you're uh, following along as we, we do this with a smile on your face because um, that's, that would be a good thing. Okay, so anytime we work with uh, cultures on a slide, uh, we, uh, we spread it over the, uh, the, the surface of the, uh, the slide. Now, there's a problem with slides when you buy them brand new. It, the, the kit's no different. Uh, anytime you have brand new spanky new slides the companies that manufacture these are really really proud of them and they don't want them to stick there there's a sort of a charge effect that happens between glass so what they'll do is they'll spray animal fat on the surfaces of the slides and that way they're easier to take apart and they glisten and you'll be really happy about it. well from a microbiologist's point of view that's a disaster um, that means that we have to clean these slides every every time we get a new slide we've got to clean it because bacteria won't stick to it animal fat is not conducive for getting bacteria to stick to a slide so what we have to do uh, is clean it now there's several ways you can go about doing this we can do it the easy way or the hard way it depends on the resources so i'm going to leave it up to you but you can soap and water it just make sure you're aggressive with a good soap and wash it and thoroughly I would use warm or some, uh, a little bit hotter than warm water uh, to, get, to rinse the slides and it's okay you can dry it aggressively the idea is you want to get that animal fat off because the bacteria won't stick and it won't spread very well either so uh, that's something that uh, we want to uh, try to do and then you pass the slide through a flame now this gentleman's not wearing a glove and it's not a good idea to ever hold the slide with your hand I would use uh, if you have any uh, laundry or clothes clips or any types of uh, tongs or anything like that to hold the slide uh, because you don't want to burn your fingers but you want to pass it through the flame about two to three times uh, depending if it's a candle flame maybe four if I'm using a Bunsen burner uh, maybe two three um, and I'm going to show you how to use a Bunsen burner in, at a later date then you flood the slide with a stain once the bacteria is sticking so you can see that if we don't fix it uh, first then um, most likely the bacteria are going to get washed off when you apply the stain okay so this is kind of the overall steps that are involved and there's more detail and i'm going to go over that here in a second but uh, this is really really important is if uh, uh, sometimes if you don't have the soap and water and you're not accessing that in a lab or whatever uh, you all you have to do then is to take the slide and just burn a, uh, uh, the fat the animal fat off by passing it through the flame now I, I I'm reluctant to mention it because some get that confused with heat fixing that is not heat fixing what we're trying to do is get rid of animal fat you can burn it off the slide and for me in my hands it seems to work better uh, that the fat actually gets incinerated and, uh, and uh, the, the slide's not going to catch fire or anything like that it's be, be hot so you got to be at least uh, observant of that uh, but uh, we are adults and we know about hot things so anyhow I just thought I'd mention that so uh, the idea of flooding it now let me go to the next slide and go in a little bit more detail now the sources of our uh, cells of bacteria that we're going to look at can come in many different forms I got two that we're looking at one is from a liquid culture and then we can just spread that uh, usual you can use a little micro pipette or whatever you want to use very strange one of the things I find students feel like they have to see the bacteria and they put so much on there uh, it's it's almost like trying to look at a cake uh, and having a microscope look through a cake I mean it, it's gonna be really hard so uh, I, I just a, a light uh, application of cells will be good enough and allow it to air dry so the media is fine 
allow it to air dry you can blow on it I usually what I'll do is that I'll put a drop on the slide if it's a good clean slide you'll find out because you use the side or the edge of your loop and I'm going to talk about the, the inoculation loop here in a little bit but you can spread uh, the bacteria culture uh, across the, the uh, surface of the slide, the top surface. Now, how do you know if your slide is the top or bottom? Well, it's really up to you, but most of them are fritted. In other words, they sandblast the slide at one edge or one corner, and you'll see that. It's a whitish, and, and obviously it's rough because they sandblasted the slide. That's the top. And then you can write on that with a pen, or I usually just use tape and write with a pen and then tape it over the frit part and you'll be set. I should always label your slides and then uh, allow it to air dry by blowing on it or you can put it on uh, like uh, the little toaster oven if you have one. Let it turn it on for a little bit and let it uh, then turn it off and then put a slide on it. It'll be like a little warmer at the top and you can you can dry it that way um, if you want. Um, and then you heat fix it under a candle or a Bunsen burner sort whatever you got uh, one or two passes on a Bunsen burner maybe three or four uh, over a candle flame the idea is you want to melt the little bit of the polysaccharide that's there so it, it adheres to the glass and that way when we do the staining techniques uh, it won't wash away now if you're working on a solid media where there's a colony what I usually do is put a little droplet of water, very small droplet of water, take the loop, and then I touch the colony, and then I uh, disperse the bacteria into that little droplet of water, and then do the same thing as before, use the edge of my loop and spread the cells, blowing on it as I do that, and then allow it to dry, and then I heat fix it. And then that gives you a good... Uh, uh, application now I have protocols for all the stainings that I've uh, going to be talking about and uh, I have a word on that of uh, uh, protocols or something you follow uh, and they're called SOPs in the hospital standard operating procedures we have to follow those uh, you always follow those to the T uh, because if something goes wrong someone dies or whatever uh, you may have to go to court and testify. You did the SOPs as, you know, whatever. You can imagine a grieving family and it was due to an error. Well, that's why we always follow SOPs. So anyhow, uh, so much for that. So the stain, just this kind of the overview for a simple stain and uh, all the other stains are kind of a, a modification of this one. Methylene blue is really easy to do. You just apply that now to your fixed cells that are on the slide. And you let it sit for a minute, and then you uh, tilt the slide over a sink and just very gradually and very easily dribble a little bit of the water on the surface to wash off any remaining uh, methylene blue that's not s that's sticking. And uh, you can come back with iodine and uh, you can it depends on the uh, technique but this is just a simple one iodine it tends to help the binding of the of the stain and rinse it with water and then you can uh, blot it dry now I'm not saying wiping that slide there is blotting paper that what it does is it wicks the water off the slide now I, I don't recall off the top of my head if we have blotting paper in our kits or not it's not absolutely necessary all you can do uh, is just blow on it and wait wait for it to, to dry uh, you could use um, I guess something that you need to throw away like a paper towel just one section of a paper towel and just very gently wick it that way do not wipe because it will take the sample right off your slide just wick the water and then view it under a microscope okay so just to reiterate we always follow SOPs standard operating procedures these are things that uh, wherever you go these are procedures that have been worked out They've been verified usually by some controlling agency, and we have to follow those. Uh, we're in a BSL-2 lab, and I, the protocols that are 
specific for BSL-2 uh, are there for reasons, and we do that. We're not to redesign them because then you have to go through all the qualifying and the, the proving of the techniques, and uh, we don't want to do that. And then, of course, you testify that you followed SOPs, you'll be walking home happy because you've done everything you needed to do. If the hospital, whatever, didn't do the SOP properly, that's their problem, not yours. And so you'll follow that. Now, a word about the inoculation loop. This is the important tool for microbiologists. All of this, of, of course, is coming from uh, various uh, sources of documentation. Uh, you can use my slide set uh, to refer to this. But um, the loop has a very small loop at the bottom. Some microbiologists like to bend it just a smidge at the end so you can see it looks like a sort of like a dental tool. Um, no, uh -uh. You just leave the loop straight. Uh, and we're going to talk about how uh, to get familiar with the loop and some techniques for that that, that will be coming. But for right now, no, that's, uh, that will be something we need to worry about later. So if you notice how to fire up a loop properly, and I'm going to go over this again. Redundancy is one of my favorite things to do, is just to remind you. There are several ways uh, to fire up a loop. Now this shows starting from the uh, from the base of the loop going out to the tip, and some microbiologists do that. I start from the tip and move through to the hottest part of the flame, and go all the way through to the end of the wire, right to the uh, where the wire goes in to the or attaches to your um, the metal piece, and then depending on what I'm doing is that I can rotate and go up as close to the handle that I feel comfortable doing to make sure I've got a sterile loop to, to work with. The wire is usually platinum. It can handle many, many uh, types of heating. Now, the diagram that I gave you, I'm sorry it's kind of crappy, but hey, I usually do it in real time. But I gave you a picture of a flame that's proper, and I'm going to go over this, but you can see that there's that blue sort of little flame over top of a, a yellow flame. So this is a flame and then on top of that's a flame. This is called the inner core of the flame. That is, that area right there, that flame is the hottest part. Down here is cooler by significantly and up here is not as hot, believe it or not. So the loop will be the hottest or get uh, fired up right there. This this uh, flame that this gentleman's using or whoever it is, is uh, kind of wimpy and um, I would not pass that as a good technique, but I just wanted to show you uh, the flaming of the loop. You can see it glowing as it goes through the fire, and uh, there you go. Um, that's all I wanted you to see from that. To reiterate on preparing the slides, make sure you clean them first. I'm just, again, it's redundant, but uh, just to go over it one more time, uh, you want to make sure that the slides are clean because they have that animal fat on there and so we don't want things um, sticking. So you place a very small droplet if we're going to take from a colony or a droplet from your culture and uh, take um, a loop full and suspend it in there. Then using the side of the loop, this longer part of the wire, just drag it right on down back and forth on the top of that slide. So you can start in the liquid part and just move it. And what that does is it evenly distributes that uh, bacteria across the slide and that's what we want. Uh, students like to see lots of bacteria and that's not the best thing for staining. You want a nice thin film and uh, so you'll get used to it. While you're moving the uh, the inoculation loop back and forth, you're blowing on it. That helps dry it and then uh, we're almost there. So the next step would be heat fixing. So we apply the, the bacteria however uh, you're doing that and you pass it through the flame. Now this looks like it's roasting it like you know at a campfire or something. This should be moving back and forth. You see there's these uh, in the day people used to hang their clothes on lines and put it outside and uh, let the clothes dry and they use clothes pins to do that. I know, I know. Um, when I was growing up, you see, I used to have to walk to school uphill both ways. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm that age. Uh, anyhow, back and forth, back and forth. One or two uh, over a Bunsen burner, maybe three or four, and that heat fixes the bacteria. We used to put it on the back side of our hand, but we wear gloves, so we don't want to be melting gloves. So uh, just trust me, it's a, uh, about three to four passes with a candle like we have in our kits. So 
a simple stain. Uh, the procedure um, you now it's making reference to a page in the lab manual. Don't don't worry about that. Uh, the key is you just use uh, the procedures uh, saturating. You can use what was uh, provided in your manual uh, on e-science, that sort of thing. Or literally, you're just putting uh, the dye on for one minute and it could be crystal violet, it could be methylene blue, whatever, rinse it. And this procedure doesn't even call for adding uh, iodine, um, so that's optional as well. Uh, it, it, it works really well. What you want to do is to have the stain, the vital stains, uh, allow you to see that as contrast. That's why we use stains, uh, because bacteria are pretty clear. You know, can't really see them very well unless you stain them. A negative stain is an excellent way as well. We, we usually use the negative stains for looking at cellular morphologies and various things. It depends. Nigrosin stain, I believe it's in our kit, uh, you can stain. And uh, they use, instead of using the flat side of your loop uh, to spread it, you can use another slide and you tilt it and it, it sort of spreads the bacteria. You can do it that way if you want, uh, but anyhow, the, the, uh, a, a, the slide set's available if you want to look at the procedures uh, to try some of these with your kit. I highly uh, encourage you to try restaining, even though the procedure may not be, uh, it may be a deviation from what the e-science folks do, but uh, uh, you f feel free. Now, uh, my offer still stands if you uh, do a stain, I, I prefer you to do it with a gram stain, uh, but if you're really proud of that gram stain, uh, you can send it to me and I will visualize it and image it and then send it to you electronically. So the, the only rub is that you have to mail it to me through snail mail using my home address, which I'll provide, and you can send me your slides, uh, put your name and all that stuff and then I will email it to you imaged on a microscope, the very one I have here, and you can have your very own copy of your first gram stain. If it bores you and that's not something you want to do, that's fine. I, I'm not going to think any more or less or anything like that. I just want to provide that opportunity for you to capture some of your uh, staining uh, skill. The capsule stain is kind of fun. I'm going to show you that. Uh, the very end of this uh, video today, I'm just going to go through some slides so let you see them and uh, see how I do it. And then the gram stain. Now the gram stain we've already talked about. Again, just ignore the lab manual reference. I ripped this off from something else, but it's okay. Uh, for education, the idea is uh, knowing what we're doing and you follow SOPs. I will give you a standard uh, sort of a visual that has a step-by-step -step of a gram stain and that will be added to the uh, materials for the microscope section. Uh, so you saturate the smear. Now literally you, you just flood the slide after you heat fix, of course, the, the uh, sl slide. So then you uh, tilt the slide just a little bit and you gently add water. Then you saturate it again. You flood the slide, it flat again, and you flood it uh, with iodine. And then you, you tilt it and you gently rinse it. Now you don't use force. You don't use the highest setting of the sink or something like that because you'll be very unhappy because you'll be washing the cells off of the slide into the drain. Then you decolorize with a gram, uh, a decolorize, uh, decolorizer, which is really a mixture of 80 to 20 of as, uh, alcohol to uh, acetone. I believe it's 80% alcohol and 20% um, acetone. It varies. Uh, three to five seconds only. And so if you see a certain color pouring off all of these, it's obviously not gram positive. Now, you can't make any determination. The only way to know if it's gram positive or not is uh, by viewing it under a microscope. Um, whatever comes off the slide really is irrelevant. You, you can't use that, so you don't know. Then you rinse it gently with water. You counter stain because if it's not going to be um, a gram positive, then we've decolorized the cells, so we need to come back with a counter stain which is uh, uh, in, in your kit uh, with saffron. And you flood the slide and you let it sit for one minute. Then you tilt the slide and rinse it very gently with water. And then we dry it, not wipe it, 
we dry it you know, by wicking the water off of it with bibulous paper or if we have to improvise use a paper towel but ever so slightly uh, just wick the water off of there or you can be patient just blow on it until it's dry and then we look at it under a microscope so ground positives will be purple positive purple I sprayed all over the microphone positive purple so hopefully you'll remember that negatives will be red I don't say pink because that's spitting and then you will get that confused so gram negatives stain red a reddish color and so you'll see that um, and when we do unknowns we always want uh, to try to do something that has a control uh, you may or may not want to do that but um, a lot of times when we're starting to learn this stuff so now I'm going to show you on a microscope how to put up a slide and that sort of thing. But I'm going to talk through it first like I did before. Uh, so there's the stage. There's the clip I was referring to there. That clip right there. You see how nicely I put that little... Gee, gosh. It's amazing. Your, your instructor is just... He's a mess. Uh, anyhow, you just uh, pull this little arm back, if that's the way the one on the, your microscope works, but a little stage. And what that does, it has a little bit of tension on there, and that will hold the slide into place. This one's a little bit different. I just wanted to show you the ten tensioners, like the ones that we have at Wake Tech, is actually this something you squeeze, and then the tensioner is sprung uh, with the spring here, and it wants to move this way, and it holds the slide. So my scope has this little swinging arm that holds the slide this one is um, that kind of clamps it but it's the same concept but you want to put the slide because you want to hold it because the stage is going to be moved by the manipulators on the side and the manipulators are how we move that stage around so we can view the slide and, and go and look for the goodies we always start with a 4x when we address the microscope and put the slides on there it's always at 4x 4x is the scanning objective I've already mentioned that but again it's just important just to make sure that we're the, the 4x in our scopes so most scopes it kind of adjust is the same is uh, red banded but it doesn't have to be uh, I can't remember I, I believe the, uh, the Zeiss one was red too but anyhow you uh, want to adjust the um, course adjust uh, with the slide on there all the way up and then just a, like a quarter of a turn you can get it somewhat in focus and then these are out of my notes uh, that I provided uh, that are uh, parked on uh, blackboard uh, for the instructor module part and so you can always find those there if for some reason you can't see anything now some bacteria are pretty small and at 4x it's really hard to see them so here's a tip from your uncle Ed what I would do is migrate the stage to the edge of the slide and there you're going to see the imperfection of the glass where they cut it and that will get you on the plane of focus in other words if you can see the the edge of that slide then anything that's on that slide you'll be able to see it because now you're on the right plane of focus and you'll see that and so that's just a tip to help you get started with the 4x and that sort of thing and then you can move through the objectives, the 4x, 10x, and that one got cut 100x. Uh, it's in my uh, write-up. But the two terms that I do want you to know are is parfocal. In other words, I can start at 4x, swing the objective around to the 10x, and it'll be somewhat in focus. That is parfocal. And let's say I'm working on a group of cells that I was, you know, I moved the uh, stage where I wanted it and all that, and then I move it to the next objective, and it's pretty much in the same place that's paracentric so when we moved it so you can imagine that these are two features that are really nice and we have to pay extra money for but uh, that's okay I'd rather do that it's a, it's a huge amount of work to try to uh, overcome these two things if you don't have it so let me uh, set up uh, some slides here the very first one I'm going to do is a simple stain and then I'm going to move uh, to the negative stain and then I'm going to move to the capsule stain and uh, then the very last one will be a gram stain. Now I'm not going to perform the staining procedure I'm just going to show you the end result of those uh, using the, uh, the scope so let me go back and see if I can be smart this time and um, I think that's it there there we go 
So uh, if you look in the, I guess it'll be on the right, you'll see a smaller screen. You know, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, one of the first stains here. This will be a simple type stain, I believe. And this one will be, of course, a small microorganism. Um, this will be a lactus, lactus, uh, uh, lactobacillus strain that um, I used a simple stain to, to at least get it. So the very first thing I do is I go all the way up and then down just a smidge. You can see that all of a sudden, boom, we got some kind of uh, bacteria in focus. Let me move the stage by using the manipulators. You can see that, um, the manipulators there. And if you look on the, on the screen, the smaller one, you'll see as I try to focus this, uh, I can use the course adjust. Now I'm going to use the par focal uh, capability of this microscope, slide the next power in, and you see it's somewhat in focus, not perfect. Well, it's, you know, it's not bad for a $120 microscope. And there you go. Uh, I'm now looking at this. Uh, at 40x objective with, with a final or total magnification of 400x. Isn't that amazing? So you can see that um, on the screen there. And so there's that. Now I can adjust the brightness to, to get some contrast. Sometimes that does help. I can adjust the uh, f-stop equivalent of moving uh, on the under stage here. You can see I, it doesn't have that much of an effect. I usually like to um, change the intensity of the light to get the contrast the way I like it and then um, I'll move up to the next a par focal again and hopefully uh, turn a little bit more light on there and then the plane of focus every time I move up we might just have to adjust a little bit uh, to find the plane of focus and we've got to be patient we got to go slow if we go fast we we'll go right through the plane of focus and then we'll be focusing until the cows come home and we'll never see it. And that's usually the result of uh, why a lot of students don't like using a microscope because uh, the, the instructor didn't take enough time to say, hey, look, go slow. And you'll get into the plane of focus. And uh, there you go. So that is now sitting at a 40x objective. That's a 400x total magnification. I think maybe I said it wrong last time. I, I, I don't know. It was, uh, it, I guess the other one. What was the other one? It was four. It was 10x. That yeah, was 100, 100x 100 total magnification. Now I'm going to move up to the big boy. This is uh, the highest uh, I can do on this was 100x uh, magnification. And then I'm going to go really, really slow and try to get in focus here. And well, there it is. And um, so it's just a simple stain. Um, I believe it's uh, uh, the, uh, a stain from uh, the crystal violet from uh, the Graham kit. And so there you go. You can see the bacteria. Now I could put a drop of oil and get uh, even better uh, magnification, but that's, um, I'll save that for a later date. So that is just a simple stain. So now once you've looked at that and you're all impressed, I might increase the light a little bit just to, so that, oh, what the heck, I'll put oil on it. I don't mind cleaning it later, I guess, wherever I put my oil kit. Well, I don't seem to have it right at my hand here. It should be here. I just moved it. Hmm. Oh, well, well, as I say, I'll do it next time then. I do not see it. You're absent-minded uh, instructor here has evidently put my little kit away somewhere with the oil in it. I don't know where it is. Well, as soon as I stop filming, I'm sure I'll find it. I'll probably trip over it. Uh, anyhow, and so let me move to another uh, slide here. So in order to do that, I move the stage of uh, the uh, objective to the 4x, move the stage down so I get my hands in there, move the clip away, and you notice you know, the label and everything is on the left side. Now I'm going to look at, um, let's look at a capsular stain. And it's got a capsule stain in there. And this is a, um, which, which stain is it? It is, it just says general bacterial capsules, so it's not telling me the organism. It's a cheap slides. Anyhow, at least we have slides to look at. So now I'm going to move the stage all the way up and then a quarter turn down and kind of get me in focus and evidently I, 
arbitrarily got it onto the sly edge of the cover slip, which is fine. Now I'll move it over and wow, well, there we go. We got something to, to be looking at. Now the uh, capsular stains we have to, to be a little patient with. We may want to add more contrast and the like with that because uh, the capsular stain is more of uh, areas that are not being stained and uh, that can be uh, a problem sometimes and so there you go um, now I'm going to try to add a little bit more contrast this is uh, the 4x objective of 40 times magnification and what crappy slide anyhow I'll just go to the next magnification and see if I can see any better now I'm going to use the fine adjust there and doesn't really improve much. You're supposed to see zones of clearing around the bacteria cells. And um, great. Glad that Wake Tech paid a lot of money for these slides. Um, yeah, I'm being snarky. Uh, let's see now. Move this in. Now I moved up to the next magnification. The 40, 40x times 10 is 400. And let's see if I can get this to focus. And with my scope. It may or may not let me do it. There it is. There we go. And now you can see the, the bacteria. And now uh, trying to find some clearing zones around it to see if it has a capsule. Uh, the slide claims that it does. But I'm not convinced. So I'm going to go in that group that's in the center here. And, uh, oops, and see if I can get them uh, in there. Okay. So focus that in I'm going to move up to the next to the 100x 1000x uh, final total magnification and uh, let's see how we do that I may have to kick up the uh, light source just a smidge so this is where you get impatient and you go too fast and uh, you could zip right through the plane of focus because this is the highest magnification and hopefully, no, that's not going to let me do that. So let me back down and see if I can get this back into focus. And that's what you do if you get lost. Apparently, I got lost. And now we go back to the lens and we slowly bring it in. Hopefully, uh, this is where the money pays off in a good scope is that you want to be able to, to get it to go in and once you get through that plane of focus it'll pop right where it's supposed to be hopefully and, and is it going to let me do it? is it going to let me do it? I'm not sure if it was my Carl's eyes we'd be done with this um, you know, this is this is where we pay the extra money uh, for magnification. Of course, it always happens when you're doing a recording. I go back on down, and I'm not too worried about it because um, it is just a capsular stain, and, uh, and I'm really not seeing much. So I don't think a higher magnification is going to really help me anyhow uh, with this slide. It's a crappy slide. But what you would normally see is that material the coloring around it would be void and that would be evidence of a capsule so that was not as good of a slide as I had hoped but that's okay um, I'm gonna look at a different bacterial type so I'm gonna go back down a little bit move the uh, lens back to the 4x uh, objective the scanning objective put the next slide on here uh, these are bacteria types gram stain so this will be a gram stain it'll be the last slide that I view for right now and now uh, at the 4x I move up quarter turn down just a smidge there and you can see I'm kind of in the ballpark now I'll move the lens in and you see those little specks so it's not dust it's not bubbles or anything that is bacteria they are small um, so I'm gonna move to the next objective use the par focal hopefully and boom there they are not too bad so what magnification this is 
the 10x objective, so that's uh, 10 times 10 is 100. Uh, total magnification, or final magnification. And then we'll move to the next. And hopefully it's going to behave. Again, this is just the quality of the scope. You just got to move ever so slowly. Um, let me go back and find out why. You know, it moved quite a good. So we'll get in there. Move this one back. which way I need to go usually you migrate depending on the land system um, you rotate forward with a fine adjust and sometimes based on the optics of the scope you have to move the other way and it's again we're trying to make up for poor quality or a lower quality scope there we go finally see how patient I was I was tapping my foot I could have gotten mad and throw the, the scope against the wall or something, but I stopped doing that after I was about five years old or so. So, just joking. Um, so, let's see if I'm lucky now to get it to where I need to go with a higher magnification. And um, I'm not sure. Again, um, It seems to be giving me a fit, which is okay. I may have to clean the lens, I'm not sure. I'm going to go back down. And, uh, see if I can see it here. Boy, I was off, wasn't I? So I'm going to try to get it there again. Let's see if I can be lucky this time. So, going through the plane of focus, is really easy to do I've been doing this for a while and you can see it's really trying me right at the moment and um, hmm. well, I practiced with this slide before doing this and boy it was, it was easy and of course that's the way it is so um, I'm giving you the good and the bad and the ugly right up front because that's what the happens and you just have to be persistent hopefully uh, unless there's a problem with my uh, oil ejective lens here which apparently there it is finally and that you see how patient I had to be I was about ready to to give up because I didn't want to spend all of your time and if I had my oil I would drop the oil and I don't know where I put it um, I do have a cleaning solution but I don't have my oil so uh, we'll do that next time. Uh, I'll show you the oil I mean, and what that does uh, in terms of improve the quality. Again, um, go ahead and do your gram stain if you'd like to uh, send that to me uh, and uh, impress me. I will be glad uh, to do that. But that's uh, the end of the video uh, and hopefully uh, everything is, uh, is good. So uh, there'll be many more of these videos as we go on. Uh, to try to fill in some of the things that um, may or may not have been covered to what I consider my satisfaction on this. So be safe. I'll see you.